Hey everyone, Jason Baker here from Integrum Retro. Um, just want to do a quick update. First of all, thank you so much for watching the video. It hasn't even been 24 hours. We're already getting thousands of views. I'm getting pummeled with emails and stuff. So really appreciate the support. Um, now, the first thing I noticed was the fact the way I do TechnoParrot. So in this video, I'm going to show you how to configure TechnoParrot using my automation tool. Now, first of all, let's start with the Integrum Retro INI file, which is where you store all of the variable configurations that you're going to need. Uh, so I've added a new section here called TechnoParrot Game Path. Uh, because not everybody stores their game files in the same directories, this gives you now a central location to define where is the root directory for every single game. So for example here, I store everything in, in uh, Launchbox Games, TechnoParrot Lightgun, slash game name. But the game name could be written any different way, right? If you're running Retrobat, you might have the name of the XML file, .technoparrot, so on and so forth. It gets to be kind of cumbersome. So what I've done is I've redone all the templates and I've left one out. So we're going to configure Transformers Shadow Rising. I'm going to take you step by step with how you would add that um, to, uh, to this build. Now, the first thing we're going to do is load up TechnoParrot. And in this case here, there's another version of Transformers that came out. So what we'll do is we'll go and add the game, go down here and you can actually um, hit the keyboard and jump to the letter. So I hit the letter T. I'm just, I'm all about efficiency, right? So let's go to the new Transformers. I don't think you can do double letter. Transformer Shadow Rising, and we'll go ahead and add that game, okay? Now, uh, now we're gonna go ahead and configure where the game is actually located. All right, so typically first you go to game settings, and then you're going to point to where the executable is. So Launchbox Games, go down to Transformer Shadow Rising. And uh, now we're looking for, in this case here, shell.exe or Transformers 2 which is buried kind of in here. So there it is, there's Transformers 2. Okay, so raw input for light gun. We're gonna do free play. I'm gonna do windowed mode just so I can record the video a little bit easier. I'm gonna go and save these settings. Next, we'll go to controller setup. Now, I'm not gonna do this with my light gun. I'm gonna do it with the mouse. It's just cleaner for setup. Uh, but in this case here, we'll do credit. I'm just gonna do middle button uh, for start. I'm gonna use the trigger, so I'm clicking on that. And then for the light gun, I'll go ahead and use my mouse cursor here. And trigger is going to be the left button. And uh, we'll leave player two start for that. And what do we got here? We've got hyper energy, forward attack, um, and defense. Okay, well, let's just do... And there's no reload in this, so I'm going to use right mouse button. Okay, um, so we got right mouse button. I got middle for credit. You know, we'll just... Uh, we'll probably make this free to play. So, But for now, I'll just put in the number five. And then we're going to assign the hyper energy to the middle button. So in most light guns, you have a trigger, which is your left button. You have two action buttons, right button, uh, right mouse is usually reload. And uh, the middle button is usually a, a secondary action. All right, so pretty simple. All right, so now I'm kind of stuck in the little techno parrot box. I can't literally move the mouse cursor over. So what you can do is if you hit the Windows key on your keyboard, it brings up Explorer, it breaks you from that little boundary. All right, so now um, I could play the game as is, right, with the mouse. Let's go ahead and give that a shot real quick. All right, here we go. Remember, the start button uh, was the trigger. Looks like we may not need to enter credits already set to free play. Okay, good. So we can eliminate that one. All right. So we're just going to do a quick test here. Uh, make sure that we have everything working. Okay, so we have our functionality. I'm holding down the left mouse button. What's right mouse, right mouse do? Okay, and then I've got a middle mouse. Okay, so in this case, middle mouse seems to be that special effect. All right, so this seems to be working just fine. All right. Now, first thing I want to do before I create a template, I'm going to go into the controller setup. I'm going to remove any extraneous information we don't need. So I don't need the credits now. Um, in fact, I am going to assign, we're going to assign player two. I'm just going to use the mouse, right? I don't need to actually use the light gun to configure it for light guns. Isn't that weird? All right, so we'll go here. Player two trigger is left mouse. Um, and I think, so, okay, interesting. So the hyper energy forward and attack, this is only for one player. So we may have to assign that to a single player. This is a great example. Okay, I will do that. And let's see here. So we're not using a right mouse button. So let's do forward attack, which will be on, on most gun cons, it'd be the left mouse button. So we'll go ahead and change that to left. Sorry, that should be right, right, there we go. And then we'll change this to middle there. Okay, so. Obviously, these are not light guns. We're going to configure it for light guns. Here we go. Hit the Windows key to break out of that little control box, save the settings, and we're done. Okay, so the next step is to go to the actual emulator itself. So I'm in the emulators folder under my assistant folder, 
and then I'm going to go to user profiles. I'm going to sort by date because that'll be the most recent profile. Now this is the raw XML profile that TechnoParrot has created. So the first thing I want to do is eliminate the folder path. There we go. So now it's a relative. Wherever I install this, we're good to go. Now the first thing that I've done is uh, we're going to eliminate this folder path and we're going to exchange it with the variable that's going to be pulled from the script. So what we're going to do here is I've replaced everything. We want to replace the root directory of the game with this particular variable. So we're going to go in here and just simply copy and paste. So we're going to replace this with the root directory that's going to be found in the Integrum Retro INI. So in that case, before I should have done that, let's go ahead and grab that directory path. So include the game name in this case here. So I'm going to exit out of that or I'm going to copy and paste that. And we don't need to leave in that uh, the backslash for the directory because if you look here, we're going to leave it in there. Now what we can do is we're going to take the variable, a triple hashtag tp underscore game root directory or dir, the dir, and that's simply going to get replaced. All right, so let's save that file, save our progress. Now something I'd like to show you, um, notice that I'm saving this in the actual TechnoParrot directory. If I load TechnoParrot or if our automation actually breaks, I am going on a tangent, I know, uh, but this is important. I've now broken the XML file according to TechnoParrot. So I will get feedback, which is great because you want to know, hey, what broke out of all the things? Really? You shouldn't have a, okay, well, that's interesting. Normally, if it's a malformed XML, if I tried to launch the game, there we go. It is going to say it didn't find it. All right. Normally, if you break the XML somehow, uh, TechnoParrot will tell you even on startup. Well, there goes that. All right. So let's go ahead and configure the rest of this. Now, again, remember in my first video, what we're looking for is the different hardware ID paths. And the great thing is, is this is going to stand out like a sore thumb, like this one right here. Um, so remember the variables. So if we want, um, in this case here, we're looking for player one. So this is player one start. And so it's looking for the device path. Now the device path is going to be replaced by triple hashtag like on one. We're going to be configuring this for left mouse button. So let's go down here where we have the bind name. And I'm just going to change this to left button. Now, why do I do that? Because right here is where we change left button and we replace left button with the gun type, which in my case, it'll be gun for IR and the left button that's associated with it. So there's two entries for it. So we're just going to go ahead and do that two times. Okay. Now we're going to scroll down here and now it looks like we're specifying again, another device ID path. We'll go ahead and paste that in there. And uh, what is the name? Now look in this case here, uh, the input mapping is P1 Lycon. So now they want the description, right? So the description is going to be Lycon one name. All right, so there you go. Light one gun name is going to be replaced with the gun player one type and just keep going down here. All right, so you kind of get the point here. Anytime you see a device path, replace it with the player. And in this case here, let's see, this is a left button mapping. So we're going to do again, left button. And so that's the trigger. Now notice we are now on player two, it looks like. Okay, so we're seeing player two um, axes up and down. And now here's player two start. So I'm gonna change that to light gun two for the device path. And then I'm gonna copy this so I can reuse these variables. And now again, notice here, uh, the start button is player two left button. Right. And as long as it matches my code here on the on the left, we're good to go. And then so on and so forth. Right. So I'm going to probably fast forward at this point because you're kind of it's getting repetitive and hopefully you you kind of get the point. Um, again, this is going to be the name. And let the fast forwarding commence. Okay, now we get to that specialty where it looked like there's two specialty attacks because on the arcade machine you had a button to push. We got to assign it to something. We don't want uh, we don't want people to have to go up to their keyboard. So let's go ahead and assign these uh, special um, options to player one because if you're playing by yourself, you can still activate all these. Uh, again, so remember I signed this to right button. So this will be uh, light gun one, right button, light gun one, right button. OK, 
Okay. Um, yeah, player one, button two. And then, of course, we've got some kind of defense option. And that's going to be our middle button. So that'll be the other button on the gun. Okay, so middle button. It's the first time we actually use middle button. And middle button. Okay, and we're done. Let's give it a go, right? So, oh wait, hold on. We've overwritten the Yuzu profile in the emulator folder. So what we need to do now is copy that to our templates folder. So let's go up to the Integra Metro folder, templates, techno parrot, paste that bad boy in, and hey, let's give it a shot. Okay, here we are in the Integra Retro Assistant folder. So remember how it goes. Integra Retro, Light Gun Assistant, the HK. I haven't compiled it yet, I'm still doing testing. So we run Light Gun, Techno Parrot, and let's run Debug so we can look at the logs. Hmm, okay, there we go. Now let's take a look at the log file. And we're looking down here for uh, TC5 target, we're almost there. Transformer Shadow Rising. Okay, rewriting. That seemed to look good. Let's go ahead and load up Techno Parrot. All right, no errors so far. Okay, so here we are at Transformers Rising. Let's go ahead and take a look at the controller setup. And look at that. It sees my light guns. Okay, we might be missing something here. So, um, looks like I might have made a couple mistakes. Or did I? Oh, no, I did not. I only have one light gun plugged in. Uh, that's why it says left button. So it is still replacing it. It's just replacing it with the phrase left button. Okay, this um, in theory, whoops, uh, this should work. Let's just go back, not save that, launch the game. And of the stack of light guns here, it's one of these. <laughs> Let's clean up. All right, so we've got uh, we've got trigger here. My LEDs are covered by coffee cups. <laughs> uh, let's see here. We're gonna do left mouse button. Okay, left mouse button was that special power. Right mouse button is defense. What does that do for me? Oh, there we go. Oh, okay, so I guess it puts up some kind of barrier. How many of these do I get? Destroy all markers. Uh, looks like I ran. Oh, there must be the special keys. Okay, everything looks good. So there you have it. All right, so just a quick recap. So notice here I'm back in, um, I'm editing the original profile it was in the TechnoPair directory. Um, it says, hey, there's been a change to it. That's right. We've overwritten it with all of our configs. And uh, again, so how does this work? All you have to do is go into the Integrum Retro INI, take a look now for the TechnoParrot game path. I am uploading this on GitHub. And where you have the XML file, just simply enter in quotes the full path to where your game location is. Um, and then do the, uh, uh, the modification like you see there, and we're good to go. Now, uh, also, if you're with the community, feel free to do a pull request and add some of the new XML files that come out for any additional light guns. Thanks.